Okay, so let us now read carefully this first problem with understanding. So problem number one is XYZ garments produces 100 units of children dresses a day with its current workforce of 25 sewers. Mga mananahi. The owner has projected an increase in the demand of their children dresses, so she planned to hire additional 5 sewers. How many children dresses will XY garments produce with the addition of 5 sewers? Okay, so let's list the given and the given class is usually or is better to be listed in the table because this is a proportion problem. So the first row will be the number of dresses and the second row will be the number of sewers. So what we will put in situation one are the quantities of the dress and sewers that have, that is of the same situation. And in the situation two, is you, that will be the quantities of the dress and sewers in the different situation. Okay, so hope that is clear. So for the first situation, if you have, if there are 100 dresses produced, then it is being made by 25 sewers. Okay, so it's this one. In the second situation, so let's just continue reading. The owner has projected an increase in the demand of their children's dresses. She planned to hire additional five sewers. So originally, we have 25 sewers. And then it is added by 5. So our second situation will have 30 sewers this time. So let's continue reading. How many children dresses will XY garments produce with the addition of 5 sewers? So this part here is unknown. So we will let the number of dresses produced by 30 sewers as X. Okay, so that will be now the quantities in our table. Next class is we will determine the type of proportion. So, let's analyze. If the number of dresses increases, will the needed sewers also must increase? Okay, let's analyze. Kung daghan atong tahion na sanina, do we need daghan also na mananahi? Yes or no? Actually, the answer is yes. So, that means, same ang direction of both quantities. So, this is a direct proportion. Okay. So, if you recall the slides earlier, the formula or the proportion that we can form when it is direct is this one. 100 over 25. Where did I get 100 over 25? I get it from the quantities of situation 1. I just make them into a fraction and then I will equate it to the fraction of the situation 2, which is x over 30. Right? Did you remember this arrangement of the quantities for direct proportion? Okay, good. So, let us now continue solving for x in this part. So, let's copy again. 100 over 25 is equal to x over 30. So, to solve for x, let's apply cross multiplication. So, let's multiply this 25 times x. So, it's 25x, right? And then, let's multiply 100 times 30. So, let's put it first. 100 times 30. Okay? So, let's further simplify the numbers. So, 100 times 30, it's 3,000. So, to solve for x, we will divide both sides by 25. Okay? So, we can cancel this. So, if you divide 3,000 by 25, you will get 120. So, what is this 120? 120 dresses. So, if we will make a conclusion, so we will say that, therefore, the number of dresses that can be produced by 30 sewers is 120. Okay. So, this will be now our final answer. So, hope direct proportion is clear. So, let's proceed to problem number two. So, let's read carefully. A contractor has a job which can be completed in 80 days. If he fails to finish the job on time, he has to pay 2,000 pesos for each day of delay for liquidated damage. At present, 
we have 60 men on the job and it is estimated that they will finish it in 100 days. How many more men should the contractor add so he can complete the job on time and avoid paying penalty charges? Okay, so let's have the table and that will serve as our given. So again, don't forget, the quantities that you will put in the situation 1, these are the quantities of the same situation. And the quantities that you will put on the situation 2, this is all the quantities in the different situation. So what we will put in the first row will be the number of men. And the second row will be the number of days that they will finish the job. So for the situation 1, situation 1 actually can be found in this sentence. So at present, he has 60 men. So if there are 60 men, they can finish the job in 100 days. So this will be 100. Okay, hope that is clear. For the situation 2, let's continue reading. How many more men should the contractor add so he can complete the job on time and avoid paying penalty charges? So what, what's that on time? How many days is that on time in this problem? It is actually... Uh, it's actually... 80 days. So we'll put the 80 here. Right? Okay. Next. For the number of men that ca that is needed to finish the, the job in 80 days. So let's go back. Let's go back reading again. How many more men should the contractor add so he can complete the job? So that means we will add men from 60. So the 60 Add na to siya, but we do not know pila atong i-add, right? So we will let it, the the number of men that will be added, let it as x. So we will have in this men for situation 2, 60 plus x. Okay, does it make sense? Like 60 plus ang gipuno na mga trabahante in order to target the number of days na on time. Okay. So this is now our table. Hope this is clear. So let's determine now the type of proportion. So atong i-analyze. So if an imong men na mo trabaho ani na construction is magkadaghan, magkadaghan sila. So do you think the number of days that they will complete the job is mo, mo daghan po or mo gamay? Kay daghan na ang mo trabaho. Do they do will they have the same direction the quantities when change so i will repeat ha if a number of men is atong daghanon will the number of days that they will complete the job will also be increasing i think the answer is not because if you have plenty of men working the job then the number of days that they will finish the job of course will be lesser so the direction is opposite so the type of proportion will be indirect Okay, so indirect. So what proportion can we form if it's indirect? So we can form a proportion by making this 1 into 1 ratio. So 60 over 80. So this is now the correct arrangement. As you see, as you look at class, okay, equals this is our second ratio. So, 60 plus x over 100. Unlike in direct proportion, the direct proportion is one column, no? You can create one ratio, and then in the second column, you create a second ratio. But in indirect, it's kanang diagonal. The quantities in diagonal is in one ratio. Yes, that's for the indirect. Okay, so hope this part is clear. So let's now form the solution here to solve for x. So 60 over 80 is equal to 60 plus x over 100. Okay. So before we will go to the next part of the solution, we can actually cancel the zero here so that the numbers will be lesser. Okay. This becomes 6 over 8 is equal to 60 plus x over 100. Now. Let's start cross-multiplying. So we, we will cross-multiply this one. So 8 times 60 plus x is equal to, let's cross-multiply the others, other um, 
other set of numbers. So this is 6 times 100. Okay. So let's distribute first this. 8 times 60, that is 480. 8 times x, so that's 8x. So that's plus 8x. And what is 6 times 100? That will be 600. Okay, now let us solve for the x. So to solve for x, we have 480 here. So we need to transfer it to the other side. So to transfer, uh, when we transfer it to the other side, that will become, since it's a positive 480, it will become a minus 480. So 8x is equal to 600 minus 480. So 8x is equal to what is 600 minus 480? That is 120. Okay, and then let's divide it by 8. Cancel. X will be equal to, what is that? X will be equal to 15. Okay, so what is this 15? 15 men. Okay. Now, let's put the conclusion here. So, the conclusion will be, therefore, the contractor needs to add 15 more men to finish the job on time. Right? So, for, for this contractor to finish the job in 80 days, he needs 60 plus 15 men. He needs 75 men to work for the construction. Okay. So, hope the second problem is clear. So, let's proceed to the third problem. Okay. So, again, when you read a word problem, it is always important to understand what you are reading. So, let's have problem number three. So, problem number three, you and your friend decided to share the net profit of your business amounting to 150,000 pesos after one year of operation. To be fair, the profit will be divided in proportions to the amount of investment. You invested 250,000 pesos while your friend, okay, this is with zero, while your friend invested 750,000 pesos. To compute the profit that you and your friend will receive, you must determine first the ratio of your investment. Okay, by the way, let's unlock first some terms here. We have here a net profit. Meaning of net profit is, profit means ginansya. So, net means it's the uh, pinaka ginansya. Pinaka ginansya sa imuhang business. So the pinaka in this in the business of this situation is 150,000 pesos. And then to nga oning ginansya to it will be divided to you and to your friend. But the way it will be divided will depend on how much you invest. Pilay mo gipuhunan. So if dako ka gipuhunan, dako ang imong share sa ginansya. But how do we know how much jud ang imong madawat? So we need, as what mentioned in the problem, to determine first the ratio. Okay, so let's list the given. So first is you. How much did you invest? You invested 250,000 pesos. So your friend invested 750,000 pesos. And then the total profit or the net profit is 100 Okay, 50,000 pesos. So, take note, the problem has a given total profit. So, this means the type of proportion in this problem number three is partitive. Okay, so partitive, we can create an equation to solve for the unknown in this problem when there is a given total, which we already have, and when there is a given ratio, which actually we do not have. So, we need to find first the ratio. But what ratio are we going to find? We will find the ratio of your investment. Investment. Okay. The ratio of your investment to the investment 
of your friend. So it will be your investment is to the investment of your friend. So your friend's investment. Okay, let's. I'll just shortcut the investment to INV. So we need to find first. So your investment is two hundred fifty thousand pesos is to what is your friend's investment? Seven hundred fifty thousand pesos. So these are the numbers in the ratio. If we can reduce them, we will reduce. Okay, so two fifty thousand pesos divided by or over 750 for us to reduce. So as you can see, there are a lot of zeros, four zeros above and four zeros below, so we can cancel them. So what is remained in our number is 25 over 75. Can you reduce still 25 and 75? Yes, we will divide it by 25, right? So our reduced ratio will be 1 over 3. So the ratio... The ratio of your investment to your friend's investment is 1 is to 3. Okay, let's put the ratio here. The ratio is 1 is to 3. So this one is you, that's your part, one part, and this 3 is your friend. So that means the must daghan or must dako ang invest sa imong friend. Okay. He has the three parts. Ikaw, one part ra ang imuhang gi-invest. So, kung magbinahinay na o ginan siya, mas daghan, mas dako, I mean, ang ginan siya sa imong friend. Okay. So, since we already have the ratio and we have the total, so we can now proceed to the equation. So, the equation here will be, since the ratio is 1 is to 3, it will be 1x plus 3x, okay? Hope uh, you remember this one is equal to, what's the total? 150,000. Okay, so let's simplify. 1x plus 3x, that is 4x, is equal to 150,000. Okay, so next to that is, we will divide it by 4. Let's divide it by 4. Okay, let's divide this by 4. So our x will be, so 150,000 divided by 4. Thirty, okay, wait, thirty-seven thousand five hundred. So this is the value of x, thirty-seven thousand five hundred. But will this be our final answer? Okay, it will not be our final answer class because we need to to solve how much will be your share in the profit and how much will be the share of your friends from the profit, from the net profit. So you have a share of one part. So that is 1x. Your friend's share is 3x. So we solve for x already, which is 37,500. So we'll just substitute it to the 1x expression. So 1 times 37,500. So your share is 37,500. Okay. Your friend's share is 3 times 37,500. Okay, so what is 3 times 37,500? Your friend's share is actually 112,500. Okay, so these are our answers. And say, therefore, your profit is 37,500 while your friend will get 112,500 as as her or his shares profit okay so these are our final answers so hopefully you have now fully understand the different kinds of proportion and when you already determine the kind of proportion in the problem, you can use always the, the guide in the previous slide to form your proportion or to form your equation to solve for the unknown.